hi, I'm Din. And here's another piece of Dinny's traumatized art edition, also known as more therapy homework. <laughs> this one was a little tricky for me. I spent a couple of weeks thinking about it. I initially wanted it to match the other two pieces that I've done for therapy, so to be a bit of a self-portrait, but I just couldn't make it work in my mind. Nothing was really coming up for me. But then I finally let go of the idea that this piece should be part of a set, because they're kind of a set already, just by virtue of the context I'm creating them in. And it doesn't have to look like the other two. So when I let go of that, my mind came up with this idea and this image, which I'm actually really happy with. So first I took a picture of my own hand that I could trace over, as you saw. I knew I wanted a skeletal hand, but I don't have any of those lying around, so I used my flesh and bone hand as a guide alongside this chart of uh, the bones in the hand that I found on Wikimedia Commons. It was interesting sketching the bones out on top of my own fingers. It really made me think about what we're made of as human beings. It was a little trippy, but in a cool way, so I kind of recommend it. The bird I traced initially from a picture found on Unsplash, mostly to get it done quickly. I probably could have made it work just by eyeballing it, but I wasn't feeling very patient and I wanted to get this done, so... Tracing is a totally valid art tool if you're honest and transparent about what you're doing, and sites like Wikimedia and Unsplash are fantastic resources for that kind of thing. Then it's uh, just a matter of the rough underpainting and resizing the whole thing up and working on it. I go over it with a pressure opacity brush as usual, just painting and jumping around and working on whatever I feel like. Anyway, so the point of this piece, it's, uh, it's a little bit all over the place conceptually. The bird is a cannery, which is a reference to the cannery in the coal mine. Of course, there's something here about how a bird in the hand is better than two birds in the woods. But the hand is dead, obviously, and the bird is living. So the hand becomes a bird cage, in a way. I wanted the grip to evoke a sense of prison bars, even if it's subtle. My first idea was actually to, to have the bird inside our rib cage to really drive the cage idea home, but I've drawn a rib cage already and um, I didn't really want to do it again. <laughs> and I wanted something more active too, because the hand holding the bird is almost triumphant, like really holding this bird up. But the bird, in contrast, is very passive and accepting of its fate, I suppose. It's not dead. It is alive, but it's held in a death grip, quite literally. And it's being there because it's the only thing it's ever known. It just accepts it. My uh, prompt for this piece was to try to illustrate the part of my personality that we're calling the starved one. So at its core, this painting is about starvation and deprivation. It doesn't really come across as literally as the other two pieces I've done for my therapist, but hey, you know, therapy art has no rules. It just has to get done and get me thinking, so that's fine. But I, I showed some friends and they said that when they know the theme, it really came across a sense of starvation. So that's why the title is the way it is, to inform the way you're supposed to see the bird. My therapist liked it, so I'm still getting good grades in therapy. <laughs> she liked that it was different and she seemed intrigued in a good way that I hadn't taken it so literally this time. So maybe I'll keep going in this more symbolic direction for the next one, who knows. It depends on what the, she prompts me with that time, really. I suffer structural disassociation. Basically, I'm on the DID spectrum. I have a lot of fragmented pieces to my personality instead of a single cohesive whole. And I try to keep my fragments under control by not allowing them to exist, 
I just, I repressed them so hard. They're never allowed to have any expression or to have any needs met. But if I get triggered, I regress into those states. It's not like full DID where it's like unconscious and comes with memory loss. It's I'm fully aware of myself the whole time. It's just that I can't help the way that my personality changes when I get triggered or when I panic. My therapist and I have spent the last couple of weeks trying to map out all the parts of my personality that I'm holding. We're up to six parts so far and I think that's probably around where it's going to end because we're kind of it feels like we're getting that it feels like we're like we have the whole picture almost um but six parts it's it's still more than i ever thought i would uncover so it's a, a lot to reckon with but it's it's good it's been really good work and it's interesting for me to face my fragmented psyche like this it's helpful too because it, it's been very validating and it's put a lot of things into a perspective and a context for me that makes it easier for me to understand myself and why I act and think and feel the things that I do. So the, the starved one is probably my saddest fragment, I would say. She is uh, starved for affection and touch and romance and she's even starved for humanity. But she's also terrified of it, of these things, because she fundamentally believes that she just does not deserve them, any of them, anything at all. So when they are offered or given to her, particularly touch, it, it really makes her freak out really, really badly. And it causes a lot of disassociation, because she's just waiting for whoever is offering these things to her to find out that she just doesn't deserve them after all and so to take it away again and accepting them makes her feel like a fraud and a fake and like a bad person there is a lot of overthinking and hurt and fear in her and it sucks it's exhausting <laughs> when i told my therapist that i don't even really feel human she told me that it's really no surprise because I haven't been treated like one. So it kind of stands to reason that I should try to treat myself like a human being instead. So that the starved part of me can start to feel like a person again. Because being a person is fundamental to accepting things that people are supposed to have and meant to have. But I just, I don't know where to start. I've, I've been through so much and I, I feel so alone all the time that the comforts I can offer myself don't really seem to be enough. They just don't count. But my therapist is really excellent and I trust her a lot. We're making good progress and I'm hopeful that I can start to heal the parts of myself that are so broken so that I can move forwards and heal. I'm trying... I'm I'm working on on being more aware of the parts of me so that I can find out what they need and why they are separate. It's been a really tough couple of weeks with therapy, but I know that healing hurts, so it's okay. It's important work that I'm doing and I deserve the work that I'm putting into myself. And I deserve to have a good therapist and I also deserve the friends that I have that support me through this. So it's okay. I'm making good progress, and it's okay. Um, if anyone stuck with me through this little ramble, I hope you like how the painting came out, and I hope you're all taking care out there. I have a couple um, map parts and ideas and stuff that I'm working on, so you'll see more of me soon. Okay, thank you. Bye!